Okay, this is um, practice 8.2b, the answer key to this one. Um, this was the properties of parallelograms. Okay, so one, two, and three, all you're doing is finding the measure of the angles. Remember the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. So you can use things like same side interior angles and alternate interior angles and things like that. So these are supplementary here, okay? Remember at four through nine, it's using the various properties. So opposite sides are congruent. So number four that lets you find would be an AR. Same thing with five, set the opposite sides equal to each other. Number six, opposite sides are equal, opposite angles are equal. So, so let y minus 60 equal 56, and then 3x plus 4 equals 16. Number seven, same thing, 25 equals 8g minus 5, and f plus 30 plus 72 equals 180. Those are same side angles are supplementary. Number eight, the diagonals bisect each other, so set these equal. 9 equals 2n minus 1, m plus 8 equals 3m. Same thing with 9, 3j equals 5j minus 9, 6k equals k plus 10. Um, number 10, it tells you how to sketch it. It should look something like that, okay? Um, and same thing with number 11. Number 12 through 18, I want you to use this parallelogram over here to find all the missing angles. But don't forget about vertical angles, linear pairs, Okay, sum of angles in a triangle is 180. Um, that's kind of how they got some of those there. Pretty straightforward, I think. Um, same thing with 20 through 27. This is a little more complicated here. Okay, they told you P, Q, R, S, and T are midpoints. So that means that um, Q, R, S, T are, oh, midpoints of M, X of all these little half pieces here. So kind of a lot going on in this picture, let me zoom in a little so we can look at it a little larger, okay? Um, to find PN here, you have to realize that um, they gave you, oh, they gave you that this piece was three, okay? So that means if R is the midpoint, this piece is also three. Remember though, X is the midpoint of the whole thing because the diagonals bisect each other. So each of these four little pieces is equal to three. So three times four is 12. MQ is five for the same reason. This little piece is five, so all of these little pieces are also five. XO is 10, just add five plus five together. Measure of angle NMQ, that would be this one here. Um, this angle here, I think. I don't know if I can, I don't know what happened to my little drawing tools, but that's this angle here. So would be, um, 18 because, let's see, this is 125, so this is 37. So you can find that this angle here is 48. So that means that this linear pair has to be 132. Um, this angle up here is 30. So that means when you do 30 plus 132 and subtract from 180, you get 18. Okay, this angle is 48, like I said, MNP is 30, and so is NPO. It's also 30 here, um, down here, because they're alternate interior. And then NOP is 55, because um, 37 plus 18, the opposite sides, opposite angles are equal. Okay, um, I don't know how I know that that's 30. Oh, because this big triangle right here has to be 180. So 125 plus 37 plus 18, and then subtract that, you get this one's 30. Okay. Um, number 28, this is a scissor lift. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it tells you that EFGH is a parallelogram. So if E is 45 degrees, F has to be 135. Okay. As angle E gets bigger, angle F gets smaller. Um, in parallelogram RSTU, it says the ratio of RS to ST is 5 to 3. So find RS if the perimeter of ST, RSTU is 64. So here's the parallelogram here, 5X to 3X, perimeter is 64. So 2 times 5X plus 2 times 3X equals 64. Solve the equation X equals 4. So that means RS is 20. Plug X in for 4. Okay. We have a little tiny proof here. Okay. It says they share a common side. We're trying to prove that MN is congruent to QR. Well, these are both given that they're parallelograms. 
We know the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So we have MN is congruent to OP. OP is congruent to QR. So the transitive property tells us MN is congruent to QR. Okay. So just using the various properties for that. 